Welcome aboard the virtual ship with Fellowship Chicago. While we can't have church traditionally, we can still be the church consistently. New method, same message. New platform, same power. New season, same God. Now, let's go into our worship experience. It's our church anniversary month. Fellowship is turning 71. That's 71 years of ministry and service. 71 years of kinship, a friendship, a relationship. 71 years of God being awesome. 71 years of excellence and God doing more than we ever expected. Sunday, September 12th, is our official 71st church anniversary celebration. We will celebrate like only fellowship does and honor three living legends of fellowship on this day. Dr. Ludella Evans-Reed, Reverend Ferris Evans, and Reverend Jesse Jackson. You, you do, do not want to miss this praise party. party. After church, we are having an anniversary drive through We will have music and special anniversary gifts to give away. Pull up from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. to fellowship with us. September 18th, 19th, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd is the official installation celebration for our very own senior pastor, Reverend Reginald Wayne Sharp, Jr. Take a look at what we have in store. The Pastoral Installation Celebration is back on. Join us September 18th through the 23rd as we celebrate the installation of Pastor Reginald W. Sharp Jr. at Fellowship Chicago. Featuring Pastor Emeritus, Dr. Charles Jenkins. His grace is sufficient for me. You might have to pivot, twist, turn, adjust, rearrange, rethink, reconsider, recalibrate, but say it, it's my season. Featuring Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr. Your works don't bring you salvation. Now, I don't work to get saved. Now, I work because I am saved. And the installation revival. Tuesday, Dr. Marcus Cosby. The truth of the matter is I'm saved by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and can't nobody take my salvation. The Bible says those who are in the Lord's hand, nobody can pluck them out. And guest psalmist, Kathy Taylor. Dr. Teresa Fry Brown. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor and power might all belong to God. Did you hear me? Blessings and glory, thanksgiving and honor and power might all belong to God. Guest psalmist Karen Clark Shears. Thursday. Bishop Walter Scott Thomas. Because God has brought you a higher, brought you a higher, and it does not yet appear, it does not yet appear what you shall become, but you shall be like him. Yes, Psalmist, Jacob and Carl. The legacy, the legacy continues. The Pastoral Installation Celebration. Streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and fellowshipchicago.com. Full, Full speed ahead. Sunday, September 26th is Hero Sunday. A fellowship hero is someone who goes over and beyond at the church, in their community, or in their career. We will honor those individuals on this day. We want everyone on board as we set sail into 71 years of fellowship. What's going on, fellowship? Happy Wednesday. We're back with our refuel, and I'm excited that God has brought my wife and I back from sabbatical. Thank you again from the bottom of our hearts. We appreciate your support and your consistent prayers. It's been a time for myself and my family, but it's also been a time for many of you. And I want you to know that we're praying for you and we have you covered, smothered, and surrounded to borrow the famous expression of our pastor, Meredith. Hey, family. God laid it on my heart that because so many of us are going through grief, there's so much loss even amongst our church family that tonight's message is a message I shared last year on grief. Let's talk about grief. It's a lot going on. And I, and I felt the need to bring out this message 
because the principles of the message from 2020 are still so relevant for 2021. So we're going to jump into the lesson in a minute. But right now, can we pause for a moment of giving? Come on, help me praise God for bringing us safely to the ninth month of 2021. And it's time to give. So look at those seven ways to give and pick whichever way is most feasible for you, easiest for you. And I pray that you sow tonight. Let me pray with you. God, bless every gift and giver and get glory out of tonight's lesson. This is our prayer in Jesus' name and we thank you. Amen. Hey family, this is the lesson from last year in September, but it's still relevant this year. Let's talk about grief. It's a hard topic, but we need it. I'll see you in a minute. Peace, peace. We're talking about, are you anchored? Let's talk about grief. Let's talk about grief. You know, when it comes to grief, sometimes we immediately think, a funeral. We immediately think death, but the truth is, grief. Uh, the definition is the 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 psychological emotional experience following a loss of any kind. You can you can grieve losing a job. You can grieve a relationship crumbling or ending. You can grieve a status shift or moving or a transition. You can grieve losing a game. You can grieve an income sh an, an, an income shift. You can grieve if something happens to a family member. Some of us are grieving this pandemic because it is a change. It's a loss of normality. We've lost our normalcy. We've lost our routine. We've lost some of our rituals that are meaning for us. And so grief is the, is the psychological, emotional experience following a loss of of any kind and specifically bereavement is different from grief bereavement is a specific type of grief related to someone dying so you can be experiencing bereavement uh, after someone dies but you can experience grief after a loss of any kind and so today we want to talk about grief because sometimes in our lives, it's the moments where we're losing what we love, we're losing what we've cherished, we're losing sometimes those things that are dear, precious, and sacred to us, and we have to find healthy ways to grieve. Not just family members and loved ones that pass, but any loss of any kind, we have to honor God in our grief and ask God to aid us in our grieving. Because Paul put it like this, we don't sorrow as those that have no hope. It, it didn't say you don't sorrow. It doesn't say you don't grieve. It doesn't say that you don't have the human emotions of experiencing a loss. But there ought to be some type of light still shining. We pray that even in our grieving, you still see a light, a, a, a little slither of light shining in on those dark rooms and those dark experiences. And so today, I just want to talk briefly about the Kubler Ross five stage model. This was formed in 1969 and this is where we get the five stages of grief from. Some of you may be familiar with the five stages of grief, but it comes from the Kubler Ross five stage model written by a Swiss American psychiatrist in a book called On Death and Dying. And in this book, she lifts for us the five stages, the five phases that we go through when we grieve. Hear me now. This is not just for people who have lost a loved one or a person that was significant. It is for people. This lesson is for anybody that has experienced any kind of loss. Can I tell you, I've counseled so many people this year who have dealt with the loss of relationships People that have faced breakups. And I don't know if you've ever experienced that before, but when I tell you that is a painful loss. When you have invested time in a relationship, you've invested love in a relationship, you all know everything there is to know about each other, and there's some fracture. There's, there, 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 there's some stopping and ending of a season that can break your heart. It can leave you devastated. If you uh, have poured years into a job and you're furloughed or you are released from that position, that 
causes grief. Some of us right now, you, you're sitting in your home ready for all of this to be over. You're tired of the pandemic. You want to get back to church and you're grieving and you don't even know it. You wonder, why am I napping all the time? Why am I eating and I'm not even hungry? Get out of that refrigerator. You're just eating your way into happiness, trying to find something that soothes you, trying to cope. I, I want to help you with these five ways that might give us some insights on how to handle our grief. Number one, the first stage of grief is this, denial, denial, denial. You're just in denial. Whenever someone passes away, sometimes the first definition, or the first experience rather is, oh no, that can't be true. Oh, oh I, know, I know that's not true. Oh no, 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 no. Literally, as soon as you tell people sometimes that someone has passed, our initial reaction is no, no. And, and without us realizing it, that's you trying to deny the reality that something is gone that you don't want gone. It's denial. And some people stay in that phase so long that they never face the reality because they're still in denial. No, that didn't happen to me. No, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't like that. Sometimes you can get news from a doctor. And they say, well, we see something that looks suspicious, something that might be harmful to you. And you, no, I rebuke that. I don't know if y'all say that up here in Chicago, but I came from Atlanta. And anytime you hear uh, some news you don't like, you, you, no, I rebuke that. I, I, I don't accept that. That's denial. And, and, and you can't fix what you don't face. And so denial doesn't help us on our journeys, but it is a part of our journey. There's a season where there's denial. And I need to say this on the out front, too, that, that this is not linear. This does not mean you're going to go through each stage in order. No, these stages are fluid. You can be in denial today in another stage, another day, and go back and go forward and move up, move down, because grief it is something that just happens. You can't control it. It just happens. But the first stage, according to these five stages of grief, is denial. Somebody say denial. Then the second stage is anger. It's anger. You're just mad. You, you're upset. I, I remember I remember when my aunt died. She went in for a simple procedure. It was 2012. She went in for a simple procedure to remove a cyst off of her stomach. Uh, and, and somehow the stitching of, of her surgery was done incorrectly. And fluid from the stomach began to seep out into other parts of her body. She became septic. And she died within weeks. I remember being so mad. On the day of the funeral, I had to do the eulogy, unfortunately. Her name was Auntie Sugar. You know in the country, everybody got a nickname. So she was Auntie Sugar. Her name was Gloria, but we called her Auntie Sugar. I preached her eulogy, what made sugar so sweet. I, was, I preached that eulogy so mad. I sat through that funeral so mad. And I didn't realize I was angry because I knew I didn't want my family facing this kind of death over something so what, what seems so insignificant? A doctor could have handled that situation better. Just, just, just stitch her up right. It just made me angry. My, my friend that, that took her life a few weeks ago, some of our friends, we, we're still in the stage of anger. You know, just, just upset that we've had to deal with this. Upset that, 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 that she didn't find any, she, she couldn't see any hope. Just upset that. Some people are upset that they couldn't get to her in time. Well, what if I could have said something? Well, what if I could have done something? It's anger, and it's a real emotion. The Bible even says, be angry and sin not. It's okay to be angry. Jesus was angry, flipped over tables in the temple when he realized that they were misusing the house of God. Anger is a real emotion. Don't tell me that I'm Christian and I can't be angry. No, it's a real emotion. Sometimes you, you're just angry and it comes out subtly sometimes. Sometimes now you're moody and you're agitated and you're not as nice and, and you don't want to be bothered and you don't want to talk to people on the phone and you're a little snappy. It's a part of the grieving process. Denial, anger, and then number three, bargaining. Bargaining. Somebody say bargaining. Uh, this, if this, this is bargaining. Let me give you an example. If this wouldn't have happened, then this would have, have happened. If I had done this, then then this could have happened. Somebody, you know, my friend passed. Well, if, well what if I had called her? It's the shoulda, woulda, coulda, blaming yourself phase, guilt. Uh, replaying different scenarios in your head. Well, what if I did? What if I could have said? And it's all a part 
of grieving. You know, if, if, if a relationship does crumble and the person says, I don't want to be with you anymore and I want to, I want to move on. And now you, you've, ex- you're trying to accept what they've told you, but then you're saying, but what if I didn't cuss them out that bad? What if, what if I didn't tell them I didn't like his ball here? Well, what if, what if I had been nicer? What if, it's the bargaining phase where you're trying to figure out what did I do? How could I have fixed it? How could I have corrected it? And, and you got to embrace that phase too because you're human. You're going to think about what went wrong. What could I have fixed? And that's a part of this process as well. Denial, anger, bargaining. Number four, depression. Depression. This, this is one of the lowest parts of the stage. It's when all of it has kind of set in on you and you feel that weight in your chest and you're starting to realize, I can't change this. I can't do anything about this. This is my new reality. It's depression. It is that feeling. It's also a psychological experience. When the mind is having a hard time coping with the pressure, the mind, the spirit is having a hard time coping with the reality and depression. Listen, that deserves a whole nother lesson. Just talking about depression and you can be saved, believe in Jesus and know all of the Christian songs and still deal with depression. Oh, I wish the room was full so I could just look you in the eye and tell you, don't, 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 don't thank you too holy that, that depression won't visit you. We talked about it last week. Elijah, we believe, got depressed. And he said, Lord, can you just end this for me? I'm tired of this. Job, we believe he was depressed when he said, I cursed the day my mother had me. We believe it's possible that even Jesus got depressed in the Garden of Gethsemane, that crushing place. It said when he began to sweat and his sweat looked like blood coming out of him and he began to wrestle with his assignment and it was heavy. We know Paul dealt with some depression. We know Jeremiah dealt with some depression. Depression. He, 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 we believe he was so depressed that, that he got the nickname the weeping prophet because his assignment was so heavy and overwhelming. And can I tell you, even your pastor has had some moments with depression. Let me tell you, and, 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 it's, and it happens so fast. It can happen so fast. I remember this year, and I'm being vulnerable, but I remember specifically, I remember the moment it happened this year. I'll never forget it. It was it was April the 19th. I got a call early in the morning, April 19th, that Faith Evans, I called her Auntie Faith, went home to be with the Lord. Two hours later, I got a call that a member that had been uh, uh, sedated and been in a coma for almost 40 days had come out of the coma. And so in a matter of two hours, I remember having the... I, I just remember that day because I got a call about a death that was devastating. Then I got a call about a member coming back from COVID-19 that was in a coma. And I, and I remember what it did to me. And I, and I went down. I just sunk. And, and it was so subtle. And depression is so dangerous because you can be functioning highly functioning highly functional still doing everything you're supposed to do and inside you 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 just you just find it very hard to keep on going your energy gets low uh you you're not trying to make a scene you're not trying to be uh pull you're not trying to pull on people but it just it's very hard to get up i remember preaching during that time it took everything in me and so I had to begin uh, to care for myself in a different way. I'm being vulnerable because I know I'm not the only person who's dealt with it before. And so it, it, you can't just preach it away, just can't shout it away. Sometimes you have to call a therapist and reach out for counseling and talk to people who care for you. Get some advice. Find tools that can help. Surround yourself with friends that can understand. Be careful about your eating during that time. You have to, you have to uh, in- include exercise and get extra doses of sunlight. And even when you're feeling low, make yourself go out and do something. All of those things. I'm going to teach another lesson later on about depression, but that's a low phase because it hits you and you can't tell me that that, that you lose somebody you really loved and you just bounce back no you gonna dip for a minute and that's depression but then that final that final part of this five stage is acceptance 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 and this is when 
you finally start uh, to, to, to realize, okay, I did lose my job. Okay, my boo did leave me. All right, yep, that, yep, that hurt, that hurt. I, I didn't want to lose them, but they are gone. This is different. This is hard. This is challenging for me. And, and my grandma lost her mother when she was 19 years old. My grandma Harper lost her mom when, when she was 19. And I said, well, how did you deal with it? She said, you don't get over it. You just learn to get through it. And that's a part of acceptance. You don't get over it. You just, you just learn to get through it. You just learn to keep pressing. You learn to honor their legacy in different ways and so no matter where you are whatever kind of loss you deal with I want you to know this whether it's a breakup whether it's a transition whether it's a change whether it's just you trying to cope with this pandemic whether you lose someone you love you have to you have to be gentle with yourself oh hear me tonight be gentle with yourself you are spiritual but you are very very human be gentle with yourself and give yourself space and grace to deal with the denial, to deal with the anger, to deal with the bargaining, to deal with the depression that might come and to deal with the acceptance. And acceptance don't mean that you just tiptoeing through the tulips again and running through the roses and, 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 and gallivanting everywhere. No, 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 no. Acceptance simply means you're finally coming to a place where you are relearning your world. That is a major term that I'm going to drop on you right now. Read somebody say I got to relearn the world relearn the world some people call it a new normal nothing is ever the same again you got to relearn the world it, it looks different you, it feels different everything you see may remind you of that person and so you are relearning the world over again it's kind of like somebody that hadn't used a muscle in a while and you got to rework that muscle or you or you had a surgery in your hip or your knee and you've got to relearn you got to go through therapy come on somebody to learn how to work those muscles that have just been shocked and have been harmed because whenever death comes uh, according to a book entitled how we grieve this author says whenever death comes two things happen there's a disruption and a deprivation disruption and deprivation disruption the normal flow of my life is halted and it's never the same again. It's a disruption. I was flowing. I was living. I was, and now there's a loss comes and, and I'm disrupted. But then there's a deprivation. I'm deprived of what I want. I'm deprived of who I love. And so the only way to overcome this disruption and this deprivation is you have to open your heart again to relearn the world. Somebody say that with me. I got to relearn the world. Relearn the world. And, and, and right now in this pandemic, let me ask you a question. Aren't we relearning the world? <laughs> Haven't we had to re, uh, refocus and realign and adjust and shift in major ways? I never thought a million years that we'd be all of us be walking around with masks on. Did you ever think you'd be doing that? I never thought in a million years. Uh, I talked to Miss Loretta Oliver, who blessed us on Sunday. She said, "I've never missed this much church in my whole life." She's, she's in her late 80s almost. She said, Pastor, I've never missed this much church. And we're all having to relearn the world. But it's possible with God. With Jesus, all things are possible. Listen, I want to drop this with you. I want to drop this with you. I want to drop this with you. Uh, uh, what helps in grief? These are a couple things. Six things I want to give you quickly. Staying physically healthy. What helps in grief? Meaning making. Making sense out of what happened. Uh, you, you know, you know, when, when my friend took her life, I had to quickly make meaning of it. I had to quickly make meaning of it. And, and one meaning that I came up with, I said, she was tired. She was tired. She was tired. And, 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 and I'm glad she's resting now. Now, I don't know if that's the right thing to say, but I had to, I had to make some meaning. Listen, some, you got to make sense out of nonsense sometimes. It doesn't make sense, but you have to make it make sense. I remember when my grandmother lost her son, my uncle. And, and I, I said, Grandma, are you all right? She said, yeah, I'm all right. He was tired. He was tired. He was tired. And God let it happen for a reason. And, and, and I asked her months later. She said, he was tired and God let it happen for a reason. I asked her a year later, how you doing, Grandma? How you coping with Uncle Jeff's death? She said, he was tired and God let it happen for a reason. I, you know, I don't know if, if that's exactly the truth, but I do know it helped her cope because she was able to make meaning of it. She was able to make meaning of it. And then number three, honor, honoring the loss, honoring the person you lost. Find a way to honor their legacy. Keep their name alive. 
keep the, I remember when my grandmother died, I wrote a sermon called Grandma Nim. And it's a very personal sermon for me because the whole sermon is a tribute to her being in the great cloud of witnesses from Hebrew 11. But that was my way of honoring her, the loss. And then number four, number four, this is so rich. Make time for the loss and then make time for life. So when I am in my grieving moment, when I'm in my moments of remembrance, give yourself time for the loss and then you give yourself time for life so that it doesn't always. No, no, no. You don't you can't stop life. Life, life keeps moving. Bills still have to be paid. Children still have to be raised. Uh, commitments still have to be honored. Stuff has to be done. Emails have to be responded to. So I'm going to give myself time over here. I'm going to work today. I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do as the best I can. And then when I'm over here having my moment, I'm going to have my moment. And I don't want nobody to bother me while I'm having my moment. Give yourself time. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes there's a time for everything under the sun. And so give yourself time for the loss and then give yourself time for life. God does not want any of us to stop living because there's been a loss of life. Number five, don't judge your feelings. If you're mad today, be mad. If you're up today, be up. If you're low today, be low. Tyler Perry helped me. He put it like this. He said, ride the waves of grief. He said, because if you don't ride the waves of grief, then all of the grief is going to crash upon you like a hurricane or like a tsunami. He said, but if you ride the waves, when you're up, be up. You're having a good day, have a good day. If you're having a low one, it's all right to have a low day. It's all right to be moving a little slower. It's all right to be a little more emotional. It's all right to cry. Can I please talk to the black men that think they got to wear sunshades at funerals to cover their emotions? Didn't nobody tell you to put on shades to cover your emotions? It's healthy to to cry the body literally releases toxins through your tears you are releasing pain every time you shed a tear it's okay to cry I'm so glad that I got it I have a daddy and a granddaddy who cry all the time I mean my granddaddy is the most emotional man I know he, he is not afraid of his emotions and I think that helped me as a man because I know they're both me, you know they, they, they're man's man they are man men Men, men, men. You understand what I'm saying? But they cry. My dad will be in worship or listening to a gospel song in the car, and I've seen him shed tears. And it taught me it's okay to be a man and be in touch with your emotions. Don't judge yourself for how you feel. You can't control grief, but you can allow yourself the space to grieve. Number six, basic coping. Cope 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 in healthy ways some people turn to weed some people turn to drinking some people turn to uh, all kind of things that are unhealthy to try to numb the pain every funeral I go to of young people I walk in and the whole room just smells like there's an aroma of, 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 of Kush there's an aroma of, of, of weed and Reggie and loud you know all those names I, I don't know don't 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 ask me how I know the names somebody told me what they call it but I walk in everybody is high or you walk up to somebody and you and here goes some 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 malt liquor on their breath they done had a little sip little Jack Daniels before they get to the funeral because they're trying to cope and here's the truth you can get as high as you want to but life gonna bring you right back down you can get as drunk as you, and intoxicated as you want to get, but as soon as it's over, you got to face your reality again. So it's best to ask God, give me healthy ways to cope. Is that therapy? Do I need to reach out to a counselor? Do I need some pastoral care? Do I need to reach out to the prayer ministry to just help me pray myself through this and have some extra support? Do I need to talk to a friend at a certain time at night before bed? Do I need to watch a certain movie? Do I need to listen to certain music? What, what, what's going to help me cope so that I don't lose my life while I'm remembering life? You feel what I'm saying? You got to take care of yourself. Cope in healthy ways. Some of us right now, you listening and you drunk right now because you just, this, this pandemic, you just, you just stay intoxicated all day long. God does not call you and purpose for your life for you to be inebriated and, and having all of these unhealthy substances in your body. If you need medication, it's okay. Go to the psychologist. Go to the psychiatrist and get the help that you need and, and, and let it be somebody who knows what they're doing cope with medicine that is designed to help you through certain seasons and it's okay to even do that but don't self-medicate yourself and ruin your body your mind and your soul by not coping in healthy ways so these are just some things to help you in grief and then i want to end with what to do to help others in grief quickly express condolences and sympathy 
Ask them about the circumstances of the loss. How, you know, how are you feeling? Some, sometimes you get around people that have lost somebody and you don't know what to say. It's okay to say, how are you feeling? You know, I, I, I'm sure this must be tough for you because people need to get it out. You, it's okay to ask them about the circumstances without asking. So how did they die? That is none of your business unless they bring that up. Don't ever ask somebody that. I've seen people on Facebook. Well, what, well, what happened? I, I'm not about to write that back to you right here on this, on this here uh, 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 Instagram and Facebook. We're not about to do that. That is not tactful, and it is not kind. It's not, it's not being generous. Number three, check in on them rather than waiting on them to check on you or reach out. You know the person's grieving. You know they had a loss, so call them. Don't wait for them to call you. Number four, make plans to get together. Be creative in this pandemic. Give hugs when they are in pain. Be creative. You can't hug right now, but, but how do you give a virtual hug? How do I send a hug through my phone? Number six, avoid saying the person should be strong. Don't tell anybody grieving that just lost somebody, be strong. No, you're not saying that for them. You're saying that for you because you didn't have nothing else better to say. Be quiet. Don't tell anybody be strong. Just tell them, I under I, 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 I'm praying for you. I don't understand. If you have had that experience, say, I, I know a little bit of what you're dealing with, but don't ever tell anybody be strong. Number seven, avoid minimizing it by suggesting it was for the best. Well, you know God, don't minimize it. Well, you know God pick his best flowers first. Well, you know God let this happen. You're not God. Don't try to play theology in those moments. Just be present. Just let them feel your love. There's at least two scriptures I want to drop real quick. First Corinthians, second Corinthians rather. Second Corinthians chapter one. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one verses three through five. I love this. I love this. It says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God and the God, the God of all consolation. King James Version says comfort. Watch this. Who comforts us and consoles us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves were consoled. Did you catch that? I know it sounds like a little jump and he says, no, God, thank you for comforting me so that I know how to comfort other people the way you've comforted me. That's the simple. God comforts us, consoles us in our affliction and God does it so that you know how to comfort and console others and that I speak over somebody's life. He is the God of comfort. When Jesus left, he said, I'm going to leave you the comforter, the comforter, which is another word of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to leave my comforter with you. I don't care how low you feel. It does not matter how, how, how low and how heavy and how depressed and how much grief has been on you. We have a God that comforts. We have a God that meets us in our pain and pulls us up into places of hope and strength and healing. And this is my prayer for you today that you let God do that work. John eleven thirty five 35 says Jesus wept. So if Jesus wept, if Jesus had moments of humanity, you will too. I pray for the person listening to you in grief right now. You are simply getting ready to relearn the world. It's not over. You don't have to throw your hat in as the music comes in. You don't have to give up. You don't have to throw in the towel. You don't have to take your life. You don't have to end your life. God has more life for you and every pain you feel. Aren't you glad that you have a savior that has felt it before? Jesus knows exactly. We don't have a high priest that cannot feel the feelings of our infirmities, literally meaning he feels it all with us. He feels it all. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. See, when you get older, you, those songs start doing something to you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry not some things, but everything to God in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. God is with you in the middle of that struggle. Let's pray. God, someone tonight needed this refuel. They needed this reset. They needed this word. I thank you that you're the God of all comfort. And one day when we get on the other side of this mountain, on the other side of this grief, we're going to be able to comfort people with a different kind of sensitivity. Some of us 
didn't know what grief was until we lost someone. So it made us more sensitive of how we respond when other people are going through. So God, help us to be mindful of those who are grieving and going through so that we can come alongside them and walk with them, encourage them, love them through it. and Help us all relearn the world after this deprivation and after this disruption. Someone is hurting tonight. Someone is hurting so deeply. I mean, down in their gut, in their stomach. It feels like arrows. It feels like there's a hole. God, I'm asking that you would fill it with your peace. Fill it with your joy. Fill it with your strength. Fill it with the love of God. Fill it with Jesus Christ. Allow them to feel your comfort tonight. Hey family, I'm so grateful that you have tuned in tonight for our refuel and I pray that this throwback message from last year has been a blessing to your mind and your heart. Let me say this, with so much loss, so much sorrow, so much global grief as I call it, I want to park for a moment before I offer Christ to you and another opportunity to give. I want to pray. Let's pray. God, we thank you for tonight's lesson. I pray, God, as we go through these five stages of grief, that you would meet us on the journey. God, I'm so grateful that you promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And so for the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, the brothers, the children, the nieces and nephews, the friends that are grieving lost tonight. I pray that your Holy Spirit will fill them up and cover them. Remind them that they are never left alone. God, soothe our spirits, massage our minds, and keep us in your perfect peace, your shalom, shalom. God, we need you like never before. Cover those who are experiencing loss. Cover those who are walking with their families through sickness and illness. Cover those tonight who are suffering from COVID-19. God, hear our prayer. We know you're listening and answer us again in Jesus' name, amen. Hey family, the reason why I'm praying to Jesus is because he is the one that gives us access to the throne room of God. And if you don't know him tonight, I wanna offer Christ to you. A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus Christ loves you, died for your sins and rose again. And C, confess him as Lord of your life. If you do that, and if you need a church home, email us info at fellowshipchicago.com or text us right now. Don't delay, do it today. And then finally, uh, let's give one more time. God has blessed us, God has prospered us. So let's give, look at those seven ways to give. Come on, check them out, check them out, check them out. Look at those seven ways to give. Hit up Zelle, hit up Cash App, hit up Shelby Next Giving, hit up PayPal, whatever is most convenient for you. And I'm believing that God is gonna give you a window seat. Yeah, not an aisle seat, a window seat because you're close to the windows of heaven and the blessings are pouring out on your life. Receive now the benediction. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show that you need God. May your battles end the way they should, not the way you want them to, but the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is still good. I pray your whole life proves that God really is good. Until I see you again on Sunday for our church anniversary. Peace, peace. It's our church anniversary month. Fellowship is turning 71. That's 71 years of ministry and service. 71 years of kinship, a friendship, a relationship. 71 years of God being awesome. 71 years of excellence and God doing more than we ever expected. Sunday, September 12th is our official 71st church anniversary celebration. We will celebrate like only fellowship does and honor three living legends of fellowship on this day. Dr. Ludella Evans-Reed, Reverend Ferris Evans, and Reverend Jesse Jackson. You, you do, do not, not want to miss this praise party. party. After church, we are having an anniversary drive through We will have music and special anniversary gifts to give away. Pull up from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. to fellowship with us. September 18th, 19th, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd is the official installation celebration for our very own senior pastor, Reverend Reginald Wayne Sharp, Jr. Take a look at what we have in store. The Pastoral Installation Celebration is back on. Join us September 18th through the 23rd as we celebrate the installation of Pastor Reginald W. Sharp Jr. at Fellowship Chicago. Featuring Pastor Emeritus, Dr. Charles Jenkins. His grace is sufficient for me. You might have to pivot 
twist, turn, adjust, rearrange, rethink, reconsider, recalibrate, but say it, it's my season. Featuring Dr. E. Dewey Smith, Jr. Your works don't bring you salvation. Now, I don't work to get saved. Now, I work because I am saved. Now, and the installation revival. Choose Dr. Dr. Marcus Cosby. The truth of the matter is I'm saved by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and can't nobody take my salvation. The Bible says those who are in the Lord's hand, nobody can pluck them out. And guest psalmist, Kathy Taylor. The more cold, the better I see. More cold, the better I see. Winston, Dr. Teresa Fry Brown. Blessings and glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor and power might all belong to God. Did you hear me? Blessings and glory, thanksgiving and honor and power might all belong to God. Guest psalmist, Karen Clark Shears. Thursday. Bishop Walter Scott Thomas. Because God has brought you a higher, brought you a higher, and it does not yet appear. It does not yet appear what you shall become, but you shall be like him. Yes, Psalmist Jacqueline Cox. The legacy, the legacy continues. continues. The pastoral installation celebration. Streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and fellowshipchicago.com. Full speed ahead. Sunday, September 26th is Hero Sunday. A fellowship hero is someone who goes over and beyond at the church, in their community, or in their career. We will honor those individuals on this day. We want everyone on board as we set sail into 71 years of fellowship. Thank you for worshiping with Fellowship Chicago on the virtual ship. We've always had a commitment of service, and during this season, we've increased our efforts to serve you better. We have made it easy for you to stay connected to get the complete resources you need. You can email us at info at fellowshipchicago.com. Call the church office Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 773-924-3232. And our social media on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For real-time updates, you can text Fellowship Chicago to 55949. We have exciting and informative resources throughout the entire week designed specifically with you in mind. Go to fellowshipchicago.com for the full schedule. Until we dock again, thank you for your prayers and financial support of Fellowship Chicago. Remember, we are in this together. Shock your spirit.